The road to Red Bull Wallolo Legacy is here. The June finals, the June monthlies, and at the end of this weekend, there's going to be two players, two champions, that will be booking their place at the main event, the Red Bull Wallolo Legacy event in Germany, Castle Heidelberg. Now, let's take a look at the route that they have to take. These are the matchups that we're going to have. I'm going to look to cast all the games, hopefully, anyway. And uh, I'm going to be numbering the thumbnails on the YouTube playlist, so do check it out if there's any particular game you want to watch, uh, or if you want to watch it all together, the beginning till the end. Just follow the series of videos, they'll have the numbers on the thumbnail. And we're going to be starting off, this is the first video. So this is going to be Puppy Paw versus Cranky Duckling, which is also called Eric. So we're going to be calling this player Eric for short, and that's what the in-game name is anyway. So that's where we're starting off here, and pool number one in, um, you know, match A. So let's take a look at the sieves. We're going to be having a best of five. That's what the quarterfinals are. And we've got the Battle of the Berries. We've got the Delhi Sultanate being played here by Puppy Paw in blue on the north corner on the map, as we can see. And in the south corner, we have got Eric playing in red as the Abbasid Dynasty. A very interesting matchup. Both civilizations prioritize the berries, as you can see. As you can see, once you've got the mill down, you've got the extra berries in the berry pushes, as you can see down below there, 350 out of 250. 250 is what your standard berry patch has for all other civilizations, but the Delhi and the Abbasid get that extra 100 per bush. As you can see, Mosque being made by Puppy Paw. The technologies are free for the Delhi Sultanate, so of course you definitely want to be queuing those. I think out of this two, it would be fair to say that Puppy Paw is probably the favorite. Um, but we shall see, because, you know, anything can happen. Best of five is quite a lengthy series, though, so Eric is going to have to have a sustained kind of high level of gameplay here. And uh, we shall see, because he's playing the Abbasid Dynasty, going up with the House of Wisdom and the Economic Wing, which enables a lot of benefits. So often you go for fresh foodstuffs in the feudal age. Well, that's what you can take. And fresh foodstuffs is a fantastic technology for the Abbasid Dynasty. It reduces the cost of villagers by 50%. And this is a fantastic play if you want to go for a second town centre which we don't necessarily see on the cards just yet, but it's kind of what's often done um, going on stone, but it's a bit early to tell at this stage. Poppy Paw, on the other hand, going and playing as the Delhi Sultanate, hasn't clicked up to the next stage yet. We'll be getting there relatively soon. There we are. We see the little uh, building foundation going down. It's going up with the Dome of the Faith, fantastic landmark, which produces scholars at minus 50% cost. And uh, it's definitely the landmark of choice for Delhi Sultanate at the moment. Tower of Victory doesn't seem to be used that much. And we can see now Puppy Paw just harassing the villagers on gold. Um, it's going to be an interesting um, weekend tournament, I think. It's going to be really hyped up. There's a long road to it. And the prize at the end of it is going to be huge. That chance, the opportunity to fight for the lion's share of a massive prize pool in Germany at Castle Heidelberg. And this is what it comes down to, guys. The weekly tournaments leads to the monthlies. And this is the first monthly tournament, the June finals. The map is Dry Arabia to start off at this best of five. And we shall see whether Puppy Paw starts to go with uh, some stable openings. That's often what's done with the Delhi Sultanate. The Abbasid Dynasty, do we see that second town centre coming yet? No, we don't. Now, the other thing that the Abbasid Dynasty can often do is they can often go for a really heavy feudal rush with rams. And that's because they get siege engineering for free. Siege engineering is the technology from the blacksmith that uh, would uh, normally allow your infantry to build rams. But uh, the, the Abbasid Dynasty doesn't have to research that. Get it for free. Um, but it might be the case that we see Eric go to Stone relatively soon to get that second town centre. Or we might see a one town centre play, which is not often done. But we shall see how he plays this up. As you can see, Fresh Food Stuffs is in the works. It's being researched. Don't be the faith it's nearly built for Puppy Paw. And when that does come up here, I'm sure he'll be queuing up his other technologies got horticulture here, which is probably going to be the next thing he researches, which we'll see. And also don't forget about double broad axe. There we are. Double broad axe going through. And uh, horticulture as well from the mill. Yep, there we are. Horticulture has been clicked. Of course, don't forget the uh, specialized pick upgrade as well. All right, this is where we see it. We see the move, the transition now for Eric to go to stone. Four villagers there will be harassed by Puppy Paul. Puppy just, just letting him know that, uh, you know, I see you. I see your little expansion going on there. And there we do see a stable going down for Puppy Paul. Kind of meta plays here. The blacksmith going down as well for that free upgrades. And a scholar here looking to supervise the uh, stable, it seems. So this is fantastic for the Delhi Sultanate, the little bonus that they get. Oh, this is very interesting. Has Eric just led the wolf to the villagers? 
Possibly, or is the wolf attacking the... Uh... No, the wolf is, is still attacking the scouts, I'm afraid. It'd be kind of funny if you could lead the wolves to the villagers using your scout. It doesn't appear possible. I see, we see the ho uh, horseman coming out right now, and a barracks as well going down for some spearmen. And we see the upgrades. He's getting bloomery for, uh, for free first, so he wants that attack upgrade for the melee units. All the scout does go down there for Eric, so it's not ideal for him. He's down to just one scout now. The horseman has made it over the map already. For Eric to look into secure his position. Does have his own stable and barracks of his own. So horseman versus horseman at the moment, and it looks like it's going to be like for like. Barracks going down for Eric as well. Now, the thing is, is that's really important. Is that so? Whilst that the Delhi can have double production from using their scholars and efficient production, which is one of the technologies from their mosque. What's fascinating is that for the Abbasid dynasty is they have such a huge food saving, 50% per villager. They can pump that food into military units. And so it feels like on a longer scale, Eric should be able to outproduce Puppy Paw at this stage of the game, at least. Especially not having gone for the second town center. Going for the second town center means that it's obviously, you know, effectively the same as a one town center. Um, so we shall see if there's going to be a lot of more military presence for Eric and the, uh, the Abbasid dynasty in the early game, in the early feudal age, to early castle age. Hardened Spearman upgrade has come out for Puppy Paw. Looking to upgrade those Spearmen, make them a bit more effective in the fights. And you can see now, Eric looking to protect these villagers on stone because he wants that second town center. Using three villagers, sorry, three uh, Spearmen there to protect that position. And sending some horsemen out to harass uh, Puppy Paw's gold vein, which is going to happen quite successfully with the two horsemen. All right. We see the scholars being moved around here, a little bit some bobs. Looking to heal up the villagers there on the way back, but he does lose one there. Almost looking to try and save that villager, but doesn't quite manage it. Oh, the horseman might try and pounce on the scholars, but probably won't get too much more value out of that at the moment. Oh, the horsemen are going to take the villagers off the berries there for the Abbasid dynasty, and that's that food income that they would really want. They do have the sheep on the town center. Oh, that's, that horseman's running to his death, there, I'm afraid. And the horsemen now circling around through for Eric. Relatively quick and fast-paced feudal age here. Two scholars there might be uh, under a bit of pressure, having to back off now, but they're going to be leading their way to the spearmen. Eric doesn't take the bait. He's going to look to take out the villager on the gold vein. Probably should take this villager out. We shall see. No, the pathing isn't hugely great. Now, it does take the villager out in case at just in time and just pulls out the way from the spearman. Needs to run away from that. Or does lose a horseman, though, to the town centre, but certainly worth it in the long run. Second town centre now going in a very nice position. It's a little bit far forward. Could be the focus of attention for Puppy Paw if he wants to put some aggression on. Building it with five villagers on the wood line and the deer. It's a nice expansion there. And our horsemen looking to cycle through the stealth forest. Spearman there in place, looking to push that away because he doesn't want to give up those sacred sites. The sacred sites are looking to be taken by Puppy Paw. Good engagement here for Eric, that's for sure. Great engagement here. Spearman on the horseman. This is a fantastic early start to the game for Eric. But there are scholars there repairing. Oh, now the spearmen are going to go for the horseman that Eric has. And... Yeah, now it's just sort of a micro battle here, but it looks like Puppy Paw just has better numbers here. And, and even if it's not the numbers, really what it is, it's the scholars. And that's what's really the big cha game changer here, because it's very difficult to kill off a unit when there are scholars. Like, as you can see, just constantly healing by and completely being a menace. You really have to outnumber by a large scale to be able to take effective fight. And all oh, Eric loses two horsemen there. And Puppy Paw all of a sudden taking really effective fights here. And the big fights that really make a big difference. Uh, Eric taking a spearman out should be able to win this fight but we shall see because there might be scholars that are coming in to heal them up and this is the issue see puppy ball never really has to commit to a fight here because of the spearmen don't have the great mobility so puppy ball can fight back off heal up and fight again but of course eric doesn't have that same bonus and now we see puppy ball in control he's going to take out another horseman here on the left side and the first second side has been captured second side has been captured puppy ball slowly taking the third sacred site. That's a, such a strong play for the Delhi Sultanate. That's one of the huge wind conditions. That's going to be a lot of gold coming in now because each sacred site for the Delhi Sultanate generates 150 gold. And so we can imagine with three of those, 450, if my math serves me correct, per minute for free, which is actually a huge amount. That's more than 10 villagers, guys. Um, each villager tends to mine 40 gold per minute. So 450 gold per minute, that's more than 10 villagers. So that's going to really help the village account and the economy balance for Puppy Paw, that is for sure. Let's take a look at that. 33 villagers for Puppy Paw, 39 for Eric. So whilst Eric technically has more villagers, overall economy-wise, Puppy Paw's economy is actually a lot stronger here because of the passive gold generation 
and these are effectively infinite sources of gold. So if he can hold on to these, if he can, uh, you know, wall them up, protect them, then uh, that's going to be around there for a long time in the game. And don't forget the Delhi Sultanate could build these Palisade Walls with their infantry. And that's exactly what he's doing in the Central Sacred Site. As you can see, the gold constantly trickling in. And this is a great part for Puppet Ball because this helps him get up to the next stage. Helps him get up to the Castle Age, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Eric is nowhere near. And that's an issue because Eric is going to be out teched here. Whilst he has a large feudal age army, he is on two town centers. Um, and this is the super interesting part because as a Delhi Sultanate, if you're in this kind of position, you know you know you're doing something really well. If you're going up to the next stage quicker than your opponent, that's that's a really strong thing, especially if you're going up with the three sacred sites under your belt. Now the Abbasid Dynasty can take some time to get to the next stage because they do have two town centers, but ultimately Having two town centers at this position is the same as having one because of the fresh food stuffs. So really, there's no real reason why they shouldn't be up to the next stage at the same time as Puppy Ball, the Delhi Sultanate. And Delhi Sultanate now is going to get there much earlier. And let's take the military camp because that's the only thing that Eric should have more and he doesn't. Puppy Ball actually has a lot more military on the field. And I think it comes down to the effective trades that Puppy Ball took. Puppy Ball took a lot of good fights there. They're going to take some even more. Look, these camel archers are really expensive, guys. These are super expensive. You cannot afford to lose them. They do have a bonus damage against the Spearmen, so they will take them out, as you can see, doing very nicely to do that. But it is micro-intensive. If you lose one of those, then you're in trouble. And now, getting to the Castle Age for Puppy Paw, he goes up with the House of Learning, which upgrades a lot of things. He's going for Honed Blades, so Man at Arms and Lancers will be extremely strong. He does have a Barracks, and he does have two Stables. A Wallalo going there, looking to get the two Horsemen. They will back off in the right time, and uh, bringing those Relics home. It is Lancers that he's going to go for. Now, these Lancers are going to be super strong once that Honed Blades technology does come in. But it looks like Popable doesn't actually have any scholars in his mosque, so that will take quite some time to research. But don't forget, the eco upgrades are coming in as well for free, as you can see. Lumber preservation. And this is the upgrade. This is the tech that you get. Whilst he does lose his scholar, not the end of the world, there'll be another one coming up to pick that up very shortly. Now, pressure going onto the central sacred site. Eric does break through. He's looking to decap the sacred site, but he doesn't have enough military on the field. One camel archer, two camel archers, not going to cut it. There are some spearmen in behind. But again, there's just not enough numbers here. And Eric is struggling. He's looking to get a secure position on this right sacred site with these spearmen he's being sent through. A lot of things are happening here, but not really too much in the favor of Eric. He's going to want to get up to the castle age now, which he does. I believe he's going to go up with the culture wing. That's what's commonly done. We shall see. We'll just get confirmation of that. Yes, it is a culture wing because they have access to preservation of knowledge, which reduces the cost of all technology by 30%. It's a super, it's a super, super strong uh, upgrade. But of course... It's not as strong as the free technologies that the Delhi Sultanate get. It just takes a bit longer for the Delhi Sultanate, depending on the number of uh, mosques they have. Another Wallalo going down here on the southwest. <gasps> a lot of villagers there. Oh, jeez. Oh, he just doesn't get it. Eric just pulls the villagers out of time. That's a lot of villagers. Nine of them. And the Scott are going to be retreating now. It was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. It does have a lance to protect as well. So I'll be playing this game fantastically well. Looks to be in a strong position here. It's going to be having this sacred site decapped by the four spearmen there. So Eric is pushing this back a little bit. Let's take a look at the villager count because that's going to tell a story in itself. 55 villagers for Eric, 41 for Puppy Paw. But don't forget those sacred sites acts as about 10, more than 10 villagers just about. And so it's relatively even here, I would say, in terms of economy. Let's not forget as well that in terms of the costs of things, so the Delhi Sultanate, whilst um, you know they have the sacred sites, they don't have to pay for any of the upgrades, and that is a huge deal. Getting these upgrades for free is no joke in terms of the uh, amount of resources it takes, and it means that Poppy Ball can, re can invest those resources that he would be putting to the technologies into army. And I think that's been the big telling difference in this game so far, I suspect. Camelage is doing pretty good work against the uh, Lancers, taking an effective trade, but they do have to back off. Villagers here are going to be under pressure here from the Man at Arms and the Lancers. I'm not sure that Hone Blades has come in just yet. Still 1 minute 15 seconds. But once that does come in, these units will be even extra tankier. And I like the addition of Man, uh, Man at Arms because they'll be taking effective trades against the Spearmen. There is the Castle Age for Eric. Getting some Blacksmiths down. What's those upgrades? Oh, I don't think Eric had a Blacksmith this whole time. That is actually a huge deal. So these upgrades were... Well, we wouldn't have had it. Well, I guess what he's doing is waiting for the preservation of knowledge upgrades before he gets these uh, blacksmith upgrades. But that's probably why he's taking such cost-effective. Um, this is probably why Puppy Ball is taking such cost-effective trades because he would have had the blacksmith upgrades. So that's a big, big difference in this game so far. 
that coupled with the sacred sites has made a huge difference in this game so far game number one and the best of five looking to secure their position in the semi-finals for pool one for this june monthly now this is a good fight for puppy pool that's for sure i mean effectively loses three spearmen for pretty cheap there eric or she didn't get too much value out of those and these are hardened spearmen did a decent amount of damage, but with the numbers here for the Lancers, they can take an effective fight. And Scholar looking to try and get the Sacred Sight again, but will be taken out by the Camel Archers. Nice mobility being used there. Spearman in lots of numbers, but he's going to need a lot more of this than that to take care of these Lancers. I think Home Blades might have been in by now. Yep, Home Blades has come in. And so these, these Knights, these Lancers are going to be super, super strong. As you can see, 38 attack. Okay, Eric does lose a scout there that was giving him vision in the stealth forest. Now we see some tower elephants. And this is where Delhi Salt had become super strong. In sort of the early to mid castle age. Oh, there's going to be a raiding of villagers here. There's a lot of villagers here for Puppy Ball. Might get sniped by the Camel Archers, which will use their mobility. We'll need to back off. Don't want to get... Yeah, the villagers will have to back off. And Camel Archer's going to take some villagers here. That's going to be nice for Eric here. Nice bit of economy sniping. I can't remember what I was talking about earlier than that. I just had to focus on this for a second. Um... But effectively, yes, this is what I was talking about. So effectively, Delhi Sultanate is really strong at this period of the game. Around about 17 minutes, mid-castle age, this is where they start to get those tower elephants out. Those scholars start to mass up in large numbers. And they can often afford a cube, like we can see here, Puppy Paw doing just that. For that map control, there is one tower elephant having to back up. There are a lot of spearmen there, guys. They're trying to get us around. They do get us around, so there will be an elephant going down. That is a great use of the spearmen there for Eric. Takes one down, because what you don't want is a scholar's healing it up and that, that tower elephant does go down again a decent fight here for eric it does have the spearman crossbow but it's not going to be enough though the lancers with home blades at this stage are going to take a great fight and they are being healed as well the castle the keep does go up looks to get some raids here eric on the wood line just with the horsemen and a, i mean two scouts it's not going to do much damage at all and this central sacred side and the sacred side on the left has been under the con puppy paw's uh, control for a very long time. Here comes the push. Puppy paw doesn't mind diving in with the lancers. They kind of get tickled by the archer fire. They will be able to micro themselves around the spearmen. Uh, does lose one lancer, but he's going to retreat to the keep here and heal these up. And that's the thing. These are going to be brand new. The villagers start to go out again for puppy paw. That's pretty risky. He's going to lose these villagers. And not only that, they've been idle for a long time. These four camel archers getting huge amounts of value. As we said, there is an outpost there. They do retreat to that. Uh, Eric doing fantastically well there to snipe those villagers and deny their berries. But near there comes the Scholars. They're coming on the front line there. Very ballsy, those Scholars. 60 economy for Eric. 47 for Puppy Paw. So this is where the villager count starts to really make a big difference. But it's just only if Eric can hold on. Because this is where the castle is incredibly strong for uh, Puppy Paw. And he gets a surround. The Lancers sweep in from the right. That flanking was fantastic. The There's just not enough spearmen here. We might see the GG relatively soon. Because Puppy Paw is starting to overrun the base of Eric. Looking to get this first game of the best of five. There are some crossbowmen there, but just not nearly enough. And I think Puppy Paw is quite happy to dive in here. We'll take some casualties. Actually, quite a bad, bad fight there for Puppy Paw. Takes a lot of casualties, but he's quite happy to keep the economy idle for Eric and lose, make sure that some villagers are lost. Because there are villagers going down. Having said that, though, there are a lot of villagers there. For Oh, wow. Eric is on 43 villagers. He lost a lot, guys. He lost a huge amount of villagers and Puppy Paw making a creep um, with these outposts forward. I'm actually surprised at how many villagers Eric lost there. I'm pretty sure he was at 60 at some point. I lost about 15 of them. There is a bit of raiding here coming in from the north for Eric, but just not enough really to um, to bounce back from, you suspect. But there is quite a strong defensive force here with the crossbowmen. As you can see, you see four scholars being pushed out on the front. Looking to protect that position and then heal those tower elephants. So Trebuchet comes out for Eric. Siege has to be invested in to push these static defences back. Uh, but whether he'll be able to do that successfully, we shall see. Just one so far. There's a Springled emplacement in that outpost. That is just fantastic. This kind of great map control that Puppet Paw is gaining here is super strong. That outpost does go down with one shot from the Trebuchet. And he decides to build another one, because why not? And uh, Eric forced to take the gold there on the right side. And as you can see, these tower elephants are just getting good value. They're just sniping what they can and getting healed up. Another outpost does go up in a strong position here. And the Puppet Paw looking to secure or get hold of the map control by just spreading lances around. Get some village kills on the gold. This is huge because it doesn't seem like Eric has any villagers on gold. He only has one villager. It does have 700 in the bank. 
but he won't be able to afford too much with that in terms of crossbows for too long. He needs a safe source of gold and just doesn't have it at the moment. Super number of idle villagers. This is looking bad for Eric. Doesn't have the military numbers on the field either. 10 military, 9 military for Eric, 25 for Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw looking strong here, looking to seal this game out. And uh, he's almost there, sending the elephants in with no fear, with two scholars in behind. And there is the GG. Eric taps out. Puppy Paw takes the first game in this best of five, the quarterfinals for Pool 1, the June monthly finals. Guys, hope you enjoy this cast of game. Don't go anywhere. Game number two coming right up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game number two between Puppy Paw and Eric. We've got Puppy Paw playing on the west corner of the map in blue as the Holy Roman Empire. And on the east corner of the map, we've got Eric playing in red as the Mongol Civilization. The map is Lipini. Interesting matchup. We do often see an outpost rush coming out for the Mongols, which we'll see if Eric obliges with this one. If he goes for an outpost rush himself. Talking about the map spawn, so this is quite key for the Mongol civilization. Often they'll want to have their starting town centre, well, they will almost always have their starting town centre near a woodline, because of course they start off as a nomad start, so they usually go to the nearest woodline or where they can find some gold as well. And that's what we really want to see here. Now we've got the over in a very nice secure location, but it's the gold that we really want to come after. And this is actually a really rough spawn for Eric, has to be said, because I mean, in terms of order of priority, it's really got to be wood, which you're always going to get anyway. But between having a safe ovu and a self safe gold mine, you kind of usually want the safe gold mine. Uh, because this will be your ticket to get up to the castle age. But we shall see. Because uh, the ovu being in a nice position here doesn't mean that's going to be pressured a lot less. It just means it's gonna, probably going to have to secure the gold mine with some static defences. It is around the back, to be fair, actually. So if there's a map that, you know, is kind of less problematic for this to happen on it probably is Lippany because as you can see you could probably wall up here and then maybe keep an eye on this sort of side here probably won't look to wall that area but an outpost there will offer a lot of protection for that gold mine now let's take a look on puppy ball side of things we've got you know the holy roman empire doing the holy roman empire things getting the prelate inspiring the villagers having a really strong economy in the early game because the Holy Roman Empire, the villagers are inspired, as you can see. They've got the Golden Hue, where they gather resources 40% faster. That is a huge amount of a bonus. And it's getting his food, he's getting his gold, looking to get up to the next stage relatively quickly. We shall see, we do see a barracks go down and for double production of spearmen. So I should probably anticipate some uh, shenanigans happening here. Probably an outpost rush for the Mongols. Now, the idea behind this is to delay the opponent. And, uh, well, the thing is, is the Puppy Paw is going to get up to the next stage pretty soon. And this is an issue because, sure, you're not going to be able to deny the age up. But against other civilizations, an outpost rush often fears, uh, fates a lot better. Because the issue is, is that with Puppy Paw going up to the next stage so quickly, you'll be able to afford an archery range and push this back that much sooner. Because, of course, the spearmen are really vulnerable to the archers. And whilst maybe Eric could get one outpost up if he decides to do so. Setting two villages, which is uh, interesting as well. We don't often see that. Often it's usually one. So Puppy Paw is going to be under double trouble with the two villages. And looking to get some uh, raiding bounty by uh, attacking the mining camp. But the issue here is that the Mongols outpost rush probably is a little bit less stronger than it is against other civilizations compared to the Holy Roman Empire. Just purely because of this fact that the Holy Roman Empire can age up so quickly with the villagers being inspired, you know, gathering 40% faster, which is huge when you think about the low numbers of villagers and the impact that has comparatively. The four spearmen are on the field, you'll probably be able to get the first outpost up to deny that gold, uh, which is certainly going to need to be cleared up by Puppy Paw as the game goes on. But for now, he's quite happy to concede this position. We'll look to get that outpost up, Eric, and then um, I think he's going to pan out from there. I'm not sure how much this has delayed Puppy Paw too much. We'll delay, delay the castle each time, of course. Uh, obviously not having access to gold, but we shall see if there are any other goals that maybe Eric can take, or sorry, Puppy Paw can take, because that's the key issue when you want to do these outpost rushes. You deny not just the primary gold, but you need to get denied the secondary gold. And this is the big, big issue, actually, because this outpost is in a fantastic location. It denies two gold. So we're talking about map spawns and generations and how much of a problem Eric's one was, but actually he's being aggressive in the first front of things, so that's a huge thing in Asia Empires 4. Being the aggressor often gives you a lot of map control, means you can have the pocket eco back at home. And so, you know, his gold mine is not going to be under too much pressure, but 
being pretty bad at siege down with the second outpost. They're going to deny the word, but this is probably not going to go. It's going to be siege down quicker than it can be built. That's a problem for Eric because now, with Puppy Paw up to the next stage, you can see the arch is going to start to come out, and uh, the security that these outposts once would have been able to have is going to be no longer. Now, Puppy Paw will be able to try and put some pressure on this, but there are some spearmen there looking to back those scouts away. But as the archers come out, as they have down now, that's going to be become a mounting problem for Puppy Paw. And it looks like the village is going to join the fight as well. Puppy Paw keen on not letting that second outpost go up. Whilst to be brought in mind as well that once the outpost goes up, the villagers and the spearmen will garrison in, and then it becomes that much harder to get rid of the outpost. But Puppy Paw doing fantastic well to get rid of these spearmen. And it's going to take some casualties as well, but don't forget as well, the Holy Roman Emperor had the Prelate. This village is going to go back and can be healed um, if another prelate is made. But obviously Puppy Paul will be garrisoning his single prelate there in the Arkham Chapel for now. And the outpost has been denied. Those two villages do go down. And now just leaves Spearman behind. But which is not going to do too much now this value. Because Puppy Paul has those archers. And that's the main thing. There is one scout there. But again, taking effective trades here, the archers. The village are looking to, to uh, siege down the outpost. And here we can see the micro there for Puppy Paul. To, just to bring back the weak villagers avoid losing one and effectively now puppy paw should be pretty pretty safe here bring the villagers out back the outpost is down and that this is such a key issue if you want to defend against the mongol rush and outpost rush this is a really key part of it you need to be able to siege those outposts down before your opponent gets to the feudal age because um, at least that will mean that they don't have any uh, emplacements they don't have any arrow slits because you need feudal age to get the arrow slits so this is huge for puppy paw. Now the outpost rushes down. There's not too much of a delay here, things for puppy paw. This is why the Mongols' outpost rush is a little bit difficult against the Holy Roman Empire. I mean, it did some damage. It means that now Eric can, on the back of this, look to try and get to the next stage and get maybe castle age beyond that. But it just doesn't seem comparing it to other civilization matchups. Unfortunately, this Mongol outpost rush does just doesn't seem to have got the value that he would want it to have done. Uh, the outpost went up. Uh, at a position where Papa Paul was already on the way to feudal age, which isn't the case for many other civilizations. And um, you know, the outposts there are now down without a single one being upgraded with uh, upgraded with arrow slits. So the uh, the Mongols outpost rush has been dealt with. Certainly the Holy Roman Empire is one of the best at dealing with that. Obviously, probably the better civilization would be the English, because it's very difficult to outpost rush the English, especially with their villagers having those bows. But of course, we're not dealing with that in this matchup here. Pasha's going down for Eric to get those sheep back to the town centre. And it looks like now with this position, Eric will have to commit to the feudal age to quite an extent because of the, um, the setback he's had with the outpost rush for now. Now, as you can see, the Holy Roman Empire back on gold, fully inspired with the Arkham Chapel. It's a very nice spot here because what you'll notice... Now, this is super interesting. This is actually super interesting. Oh, has these villagers actually lost their... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it only lasts for a couple of seconds of inspiration, but what you should note here is you've got the gold villagers on uh, being inspired, you've got the berries inspired, the sheep inspired, and what you'll notice is the villagers, when they come back to the wood lion, it's actually falling within the range of the Arkham Chapel, so these guys are getting inspired. So it's actually covering everything. This is actually a really nice touch. If you have not noticed it before, the villagers need to walk into the radius and so you don't necessarily have to cover the whole wood line. Obviously, you need to cover the gold line because there's nowhere for them to walk, really. Uh, this is a fantastic Ark and Chapel. All these villagers being absolutely boosted. He's going to be able to the Castle Age in no time. And uh, you can see the power of the economy or the Holy Roman Empire. It's one of the reasons why I hate playing against them, because the economy is so strong. And uh, even place things like Outpost Rush struggle to do too much damage. Now, the archers are going forward. And you're going to be sniping the scout for Eric. And that's a huge issue because now Eric won't have the scouting information. He's going to have to drop an outpost on the Ovu position because it is forward. And it's not even on... Oh, he is on gold there. He's on the uh, gold north to his base. Getting an outpost there as well. And having to invest in that wood. And now we see Puppy Paw getting to the next stage. Oh my god. Right, so Eric has only just got to the feudal age, guys. At nine minutes. And this is a huge issue because this is the timing where... Puppy Paw has clicked up to the next stage. He's going to get in the castle. Stage. He's going to have that huge advantage. And he's going to go up with the Regnus Cathedral. And this was a fantastic landmark in his position because it means that he's going to have full control of the map, more or less. He just needs a couple of castle age units, lancers maybe. 
Uh, maybe Man at Arms, seeing he's already got the barracks. That's probably what he's going to go for. Maybe dropping a stable relatively soon. But in any case, he will have map control with Castle Age units. Now, the Regan's Cathedral, once he gets the relics, which he will because the prelates are no doubt will be moving out. Look, they're already on hand on the relics, ready to pick those up as soon as Castle Age hits. And putting the um, relics in the Regan's Cathedral will have 200% gold per minute for each relic. And it holds two relics. So that's an incredible amount of value that he'll be getting. He's getting forward outposts as well. Another interesting thing we might see is that if there are prelates around this outpost, he might take a relic and actually garrison it in the outpost, and that really boosts the outpost. As you can hear the sounds, the chimes of those relics being picked up. Now that the Imperial Age, sorry, the Castle Age has been uh, activated for Puppet Boar, his relics slowly going to be brought in, and another prelate coming out to grab another relic, no doubt. Alright, now this is an issue because what's very nice about this outpost is that whilst it's not necessarily directly hurting the economy for Eric, it's in such a position that Eric can't really effectively move out with his infantry units from the barracks. Because if they if they come out, the rally point has to be back. Because if it goes forward, those infantry will run straight into that line of fire of the outpost. I guarantee, no, it has to be said, there's no, nothing actually garrisoned in here. And there's no arrows yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's nothing. I mean, he could pro probably just move forward now if he wanted to with any army, but he doesn't have anything. This What this does is offers Puppet Paw such a strong staging ground to now push out. He's got lances, he's got man at arms, he's got some archers in behind as well. So, Puppet Paw looking to be in a really strong position. Eric, a million miles away from that next stage up. Actually, he's got he's got the car stage now. That was relatively quick, actually. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure if I missed that on the overlay, but anyway, he's getting up to the next stage now. He's. Is in Castle Age himself. So that's a relatively quick uptime. All things considered. I'm not sure whether I confused the Feudal Age for the Castle Age there. Um, anyway, it is what it is. Man at Arms are starting to come in in quite large numbers here for Harpy Poor. Looking to get the Heavy Maces upgrade as well. And has got two relics in that Regent's Cathedral, gathering a lot of gold. As you can see, it's going to tick up to 600 gold per minute just from those two relics. Incredible amount of value. See some lances in the field as well. We have another relic being picked up. And that will, of course, be for Puppy Paul. No prayer tent on the field here, just for the Mongols. And now it looks like Puppy Paul going to look to see what value he can get with the lances. Just going to idle the economy just a little bit here. Let's take a look at the village account because it's 38 for Puppy Poor, 38 for Eric as well. But what should be considered here is the Step Redoubt. So the Step Redoubt is a nice landmark for the Mongols, which basically means that the villagers there are mining 50% uh, more. So the gold that's dropped off uh, is increased by 50%. What has to be mentioned about the bonus is that this actually increases technically the value or the amount of gold that's on the gold mine uh, because it's actually increasing the, the amount that's been dropped off. Whereas the Arkan Chapel and the Prelate and the inspiration that the villagers or the Holy Roman Empire get is a faster gathering. So they'll be chewing through the resources that they have around them quicker. That can probably play a difference in the hyper late game, but of course there's many variables to consider because the Imperial Age for the Holy Roman Empire is a little bit crazy with the Palace of Swabia, which effectively prints out lots of villages cheaply and quickly. Siege Workshop going down defensively for Puppy Paw, looking to maybe build up a, a, an army there to push. It's starting to build up some numbers here on the front line and bringing those relics home in the meantime. Okay, Blacksmith going around near to the place of the Ovu. And the game has sort of slowed down in terms of pay, uh, pace right now. As you can see, defensive outpost going on. I think that, that relic is going to be garrisoned in the outpost. We'll see what this does for the outpost itself. As you can see, um, it increases a lot of the specifics for the outpost. In particular, the armor increased by 50%, damage increased by 35%, sight radius, or sight range rather, increased by 25%, weapon range increased by 20%, gold generation still stays at 100 gold per minute. As you can see now, arrow slits is in that outpost. So, as we were discussing before, Army can't really move forward easily for Eric here without being uh, taking a bit of damage, or at least the vision there being for Puppet Paul. Puppet Paul now looking to secure some sacred sites just to make things worse for Eric, because the gold income is going to be huge. There is the veteran Khan looking to snipe out this prelate. The prelate will back off. The 
Synchrosite has been activated though, so that will be decapped or look to be decapped, but we see Puppy Paul rushing in with the Lancers, looking to secure that position. These Knights will certainly keep that Sacred Site alive. The Northern Sacred Site, the Central Sacred Site rather, is going to be pushed by Eric now with the army that's there. This won't be capped by uh, Puppy Paul, unfortunately for him. And it looks like now Eric is looking to start pushing forward a little bit because he will need to because he won't want this thing to go to Imperial Age because once it does for the Holy Roman Empire, they are incredibly strong in the Imperial Age. The Mongols being relatively passive for what they are, because they are supposed to be an aggressive civilization. 15 minutes on the mark, and we haven't seen too much aggression since that outpost rush. But we will be seeing some here, but this outpost has a relic inside it. I don't know if this is a good idea. It doesn't really seem like a good position here for Eric to be able to try and siege this down, because there is a relic there. Even if he does take this outpost down, he will lose a lot of military, especially with Poppy bringing his army in. There are crossbow there, which will take care of the knights, but doesn't even have enough to one-shot the knights. He's actually going for the... Uh, yeah, the, the, these these knights are being tickled, even by the crossbows. Crossbows will go down, the outpost will survive, no doubt. And um, that was a, an expensive trade by Eric. He has to pull back now. And it looks like the man at arms have uh, forced march, so they do look very, very fast. We'll be able to chase down the crossbows, and uh, Papa Ball will push this back. But he's going to have to head back, because obviously the crossbow do counter the man at arms. Lancers here, looking to secure this position. This is a position where I feel like a keep be so strong for Puppy Paw. Doesn't really have the stone for it though. So it hasn't been mining stone for quite some time now. It looks like Eric has, well, obviously he's got the Ovu, so stone income will be passive for him. Okay, we see some archers on the field for Puppy Paw looking to counter those crossbows. Alright, Puppy Paw spending absolutely every inch of food that he has. Quite impressive, actually, that he almost... He actually got the food count to zero at one point there. So he's definitely looking to spend a lot of his resources. Getting a mango now on the field. And a spring on siege is starting to appear. Looking to secure the front line. And put this as a staging ground to attack. Okay, there is a trebuchet on the field now for Eric. He can build those with his infantry. Does take out the forward position outpost. But that's bought him a little bit of time, Puppy Paw. Has got the military on the field now. The group of archers. Doesn't necessarily have enough. He will need to group up together, especially with the trebuchet looking to push these buildings. And there we do see a mangonel now. So I think Puppy Paw is going to look a lot more comfortable with the siege involved, the spring all down the mangonel. The trebuchet doesn't really help Eric at this stage, apart from really taking out the production buildings. Well, there's no production buildings, but the buildings generally. And it looks like Puppy Paw is really starting to build up in the numbers of military. 38 for him, 32 for Eric. And relatively similar economies, but don't forget the Regnitz Cathedral, the sacred site down below, certainly going to be helping Eric. Sorry, uh, Puppy Paw. Eric's gold mine is under a lot of pressure here. Group of five knights sorting those villages, and this is huge because this is more than just a story of 10 villages with 50% bonus of the step redoubt. That's effectively 15 villages worth of idle time that's being caused here just by five knights. So, relatively effective trade. The knights have lost a lot of HP, they will have to back off against the spearmen and the crossbows. But it does now give some breathing space for Puppy Paw to build up a larger force of army. You can see Puppy Paw now starting to wall up the rest of the base on the west side. Getting some map control here. This will be nice. Of course, the Mongols don't even get walls. So Puppy Paw looking to secure the map. Maybe looking to sec um, secure his Imperial Age where he can start to really bolster the economy. Got plenty of gold. Doesn't quite have the food yet. But he does have a lot of military on the field to... Uh, Delay things if there's any strong pushes coming for the Mongols. Yeah, you just get the feeling that Puppy Paw is waiting for the late game. Because he's not really being too aggressive. He's keeping his army back at home. Looking to bolster his economy in the background. Macroing. He's got his farms around the Arkham Chapel as well. So it's a fantastic economy. All started off from this one Arkham Chapel. But Eric is starting to build up a bit of a force as well, getting the spring holes on the field, the siege starting to be built by the infantry. Maybe looking to put some pressure a little bit. You just feel like this is building up to one large fight in the middle of the uh, the map here. We've got crossbowmen, the veteran Khan on the front lines, we've got man at arms and archers, veteran archers in the background. and. You just feel like this is going to be a close fight, but we shall see who wins this, because who does? Probably will have a massive foothold in the game. Eric not looking to push things, because look at the Lancers. They sweep round, coming in from the south. 
And they're going to look to take a big, big charge at the crossbows. They take a decent charge. They will go down to the crossbows because, of course, they are countered by them. But this is effective because the archers keep on moving forward, looking to, to whittle down the numbers of crossbows. And the military here looking stronger for Puppy Paw. Eric looking to be in a seriously uh, bad position here if this push continues by Puppy Paw. Looks like he's going to siege down the uh, torch down the siege. Does get rid of the traction trebuchet. And uh, looks like these men at arms are going to look to try and dive on the spring hold. Probably won't get rid of them. Probably won't get too much more value. But now Puppy Paw heads back. He certainly take the first engagement incredibly well. The Imperial Age looking to come in for him. He can afford now the Palace of Swabia. Let's see if he does go for it and where he puts it. Puts it nicely at the back of his base. And uh, behind all that economy, he's going to be able to build a lot of economy with those villagers printing out of the Palace of Swabia. And the longer this game goes on, you have to feel Eric will struggle because of that. That Imperial Age uptime, not only will it give the economy a huge bolstering for the Holy Roman Empire with the villagers, it means the army will be able to out-tech the Mongols with the Imperial Age units. And in particular, oh look, we see that keep. We said it before how a forward keep would be very nice in that position. And that's exactly what's happening here with Puppy Paw. Building up with 14 villagers, doesn't look like Eric's going to be able to stop this. It looks like a fantastic staging ground for an attack for Puppy Paw. All that would be left is to bring a relic here over there to garrison inside the keep and this will be a strong staging ground but eric will notice this there's the imperial age for eric for uh puppy paw two mangonels they won't be able to deny this though i'm afraid the keep will go up and that's gonna be a hard position to push this is a strong staging ground for the holy roman empire and now eric has a problem on his hands he's gonna have to clear this keep before he can make any more progress on the map because don't forget puppy paw walled up everything else he's walled up the whole map and the one part that's open is protected by this keep. Springle's going in there on the front line, looking to take down uh, the siege. Might be a Springle fight. Uh, Springle versus Springle. Oh, Puppy Paw might get a shot off there. He doesn't manage it. But the Ovu is in looking to a really bad position here because this is the production for uh, Eric. If this gets taken out, he won't be able to double produce unless he moves the Ovu. As you can see, the traction trebuchet. Look to try and make some dents on this keep. And we see now forward production builders going now for Puppy Paw. So when he does take a fight, he'll be able to replenish his army on the battlefield very, very quickly. Let's take a look at the village account. 69 for Puppy Paw. 59 for Eric. You can see the village account starting to really bolster up for Puppy Paw. You just get the feeling that Eric is uh, on a ticking timer here. The Palace of Swabi are behind all this. It means that the economy will be setting up Puppy Paw for a really strong uh, push after the second, after the first push is done. It may not even take more than one push. Because this is looking to be a very strong force that Puppy Paw has on the field. We've got Lance Connector and also Veteran Archers. There are three Traction Trebuchets there on the field. Puppy Paw looking to try and snipe them with the Springles. Does get one of, rid of one of them. That's actually huge. Because the Springles can just always retreat back to the keep. And again, this is just... Not only is it a fantastic position for Puppy Paw in the actual fight itself... You have to think in the back of your mind, in the background of things, the macro for Puppy Paw will be stronger. And the archer is going to take effecti effectively good trades against the crossbows. Crossbows are getting hit by the keep fire. That's not ideal. Boiling oil isn't quite in yet, but will be in there in a minute and a half. We can see more traction shepherds is being built on the front line for Eric. He needs to deal with this keep and he needs to deal with it fast. Villagers from Puppy Paw repairing and those villagers are spare villagers. Insufficient wood though. Puppy Paw doesn't quite have the wood there to keep this healing up. So this could be a window of opportunity for Eric to push this. But I think we all know and Eric does know as well that the longer this goes on it's going to be a harder ordeal to deal with. The keeper's on fire though. There's no wood there to repair. He's having to maybe trade for the wood but he does have 48 villagers on wood. It's just not enough to keep it repairing. Three trebuchets. This keep might actually go down. And this could be a huge way back into the game for Eric, but doesn't quite have enough military here. You have to say, most of it is siege. The issue is, is that if the keep goes down, Puppy Paw could just move forward with all this army, and he would have no problem. The keep does go down. What this has meant is that the army here is hugely based around siege for Eric, and one big dive here for Puppy Paw could seal the deal. Looks like that dive is starting to happen. The army is moving on the front line. The Springles looking to take care of the Mangonels. One Mangonel does go for free, and that's part of the army that 
Eric has. It doesn't have much more than behind there. There's only crossbows, and there are veteran archers there. So this is, looks to be the big fight that's been happening. Two mangonels on the line. The really effectively well mi microed there. Puppy Paul going to siege down the mangonels. That's pretty much the huge fighting force for Eric gone because there's only a handful of crossbows here. Going to be swept up by the Lanskinek there because they have got made contact. There is the GG. Puppy Paul takes the second game of the best of five. He's in pole position. He's in a strong position. Match point. Third game coming right up. Don't go anywhere, get where, guys. The match is heating up, but Eric does need to win the next game if he has a hope to book his place in the semi-finals for this tournament. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number three between Puppy Paw and Eric, the winner of whom will progress to the semi-finals of Pool 1, the Road to Red Bull Wallalo Legacy, the June monthly finals. We've got Puppy Paw in blue playing as the Chinese on the west corner of the map. And on the east corner of the map, we have got Eric playing in red as the Holy Roman Empire. The map is Altai, two very strong sieves for this match and this particular map, that's for sure. We see Eric now trying his skills with the Holy Roman Empire. Chinese being picked by Puppy Paw. We did see a second scout coming out for Puppy Paw, looking to get those sheep on the map and going straight over to the deer. So this is the one thing about Altai that's very, very nice. Is of course, you've got the deer patches, uh, which will be relatively close to your town centre. But the main thing, really, for Puppy Paw, what a great spawn. Because his berries and his deer are right next to each other. And the deer are moving closer to the mill as well. So this is probably the fastest food you can get at this stage of the game. The deer, supervised by the Imperial official, and having the mill. The only thing that would be probably a little bit faster, perhaps, is the Ark and Chapel, or, or the well, the Predator at this stage of the game, anyway, uh, on the villagers on food on the deer. But we don't quite have that. The villagers here aren't being inspired. He's going for the gold villagers to be inspired, which is not a bad idea. Could be a fast castle type build with four villagers being on gold inspired for Eric. I suspect that could be the case. We shall see how that pans out with the Chinese as well. Maybe they'd be going for a fast castle. That seems to be often a common thing done on this map, Altai. Especially with these two civilizations that we're talking about here, the Chinese and the Holy Roman Empire. And this is match point. So if Puppy Paul wins this game, that would mean he'll progress to the semi finals. And that would mean that Eric will have to bow out, maybe try his luck on the next monthly finals to try and secure a position in the main event to the Red Bull Wallalo Legacy. Okay, now he is inspiring his villagers on food, looking to get that food income to age up. We shall see what he's got so far. He's got 210 gold. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose he just inspired his villagers until he got 200, but I, I suspect this could be a fast castle type build for the Holy Roman Empire here. Will that be punished? We shall see, we shall see. Okay, some long distance mining of, or chopping of wood just until he can afford that lumber camp. We'll need 50 wood in order to be able to do that. So one more trip with these three villagers. You can see the Imperial official picking up the tax there, 38 gold to add to the kitty. And there is the age up little sound that you get for the Chinese looking to go up with probably possibly the Barbican and the Sun, which we'll see. Now, do you know what, guys? We should have seen this happening because the sending villagers forward could be a Barbican rush or it could just be defensive. I think he's going to go for a rush because Pop Boy is known to be aggressive. Um, it's kind of a long, not a long standing, but a bit of a running joke where Poppy Paul said it's not particularly that aggressive, but then we're just going to see a barbican of the sun drop, I suspect. Here. It has been scouted out by Eric, so that's the key feature. I I'm not sure where he's put the foundation. He hasn't put the foundation just yet. I think he's just kind of looking to push those villagers forward. We shall see. Eric keeping a keen eye on that uh, with the scout, that's for sure. Not letting that out of his vision too easily. He sees the villagers, as you can see. We just didn't see where he puts it. Does he put it on the gold around the back here? Does he put it around the front here with the berries? Uh, let's just see. Let's just see. I think he might be going for the middle part of the... Where does he put it? Oh, it's down the south here. Yeah, it is. It is on the berries. It will deny the any expansion here on the forward part of his base. It denies this berry patch and this berry patch. And it also denies the wood. So this is a key issue because the Holy Roman Empire, as we discussed in the game number two, I believe it was, when Puppy Paul was playing as a Holy Roman Empire, the villagers are being inspired. And that means they chop through everything 40% faster. So... It'd be quicker to lose out these resources. It means he has collected them quicker and be able to push this back a bit quicker, maybe. But we shall see, because he will run out of these resources relatively quickly uh, compared to if he was playing another civilization. The Barbican of the Sun is going to be denying quite a bit of resources as well. 
And it's just going to be a bit of a pain because it acts as a staging ground now for Puppy Port to be even more aggressive. The village is going to go straight onto the berries there, not wasting any more time to gather resources. Uh, super aggressive here with the Barbican of the Sun, but we do see the Minework Palace being chosen by her. This is interesting. Not often you see this. It's often the Ark and Chapel. Uh, often people say that the Ark and Chapel offsets any benefits you get from the age up going with the mine work palace it looks like he's getting siege engineering quickly so he wants to take this down he wants to push this back asap and uh, what better way to do it with the mine work palace i suppose but i don't know the arkham chapel seems just such a strong um landmark that all of these villages would be inspired if it was the arkham chapel but you only get a maximum of 10 villages being inspired by one prelate so you may need to invest in more prelates to counteract that but not necessarily a, a bad strategy we'll need to see how it goes time will tell but this buys people a lot of time to boom behind this as you can see he's getting a uh, another town center with the stone there we're good to get a second town center perhaps before before getting the uh the song dynasty okay now the interesting thing is it looks like he's relying on his food on that forward berries this is his food income right now not being supervised so it will be looking for a second town center i suspect he does have the stone for it now. We'll need the wood. We'll slowly be getting that wood. Some extra imperial officials could be a nice touch here for Bobby Boy if he decides to do that because it will really boost his economy. It's going to supervise the food now. Maybe looking to get that um, Song Dynasty as well, actually. It's got quite a few villages on food. Actually, let's check that. Yeah, it's got 12 villages on food. Some of these are being supervised, so maybe the Song Dynasty on the back of this. We do see siege engineering has been researched, but Eric doesn't have enough wood for a ram just yet. Has a couple of archers on the field. We're looking to try and snipe these scouts. The scouts diving a bit too deep there for Puppy Paul. We'll lose one. And there is a horseman on the field as well for the Holy Roman Empire. There's that ram we're talking about. It's being built now with four archers. We're looking to push that Barbican of the Sun back. There's that second town center going on the deer patch and the, the mill. That's an interesting choice, actually, putting it there, because the deer could have been pushed or maybe supervised but rather the villagers might drop the food off on the town center so th that won't be supervised it might be moving this imperial official to do other work we shall see we shall see horseman looking just to camp out the stone he knows the second expansion has happened now will we see a song dynasty by puppy probably not with the two town centers now okay interesting start to the game minework palace the Ram has been built now. Going to look to push this Barbican and the Sun out of his way and maybe give him some more breathing space to expand. But the significant issue is that there are two town centers in play for Puppy Paw. So the village account is really going to start to increase. And uh, don't forget, whilst the Prelate is incredibly strong to bolster the, you know, inspire these villages, there's only one on the field. That's a maximum of 10 villages being inspired. And not only that, don't forget the Chinese have the Imperial Official as you can see, supervising the wood, supervising the mill. That's incredibly strong. Okay, now the ram is going to start to work on the Barbican of the Sun. Poppy Port doesn't really have much in the way of defending that position. There are horsemen on the field for the red player, Eric. Looking to snipe any uh, reinforcements that Poppy Port might have to defend that position. And I think the Barbican of the Sun there is looking just to bide the time. As you can see, there's a mega boom going on there. With the Song Dynasty will be activated with the Imperial Academy. A double archery range there. That would probably be setting him up for a Zhuganu. That's probably what's going to be happening here, I suspect, with the Song Dynasty going up. Makes a lot of sense. The Zhuganu are a very strong unit. A couple of horsemen are going to be going through round just to see what he can find. Scout has scouted some information as well. But now you feel like it's the turn of Eric that needs to punish things a little bit. The Barbican of the Sun still had a decent amount of health there. Half the HP left still. One round taking quite a bit of time to deal with that. I just don't feel the Minor Palace has got too much value. Nine minutes on the game, though, so time will tell. There is the Song Dynasty. Now, what's really interesting is that he got the Song Dynasty before the Barbican of the Sun was destroyed. I think if the Barbican of the Sun was built and destroyed and before the Imperial Palace, uh, Imperial Academy, rather, was built, I don't think the Song Dynasty would have been activated. But now, even losing the Barbican of the Sun, I'm not sure if he loses that Song Dynasty. We'll check on that. Archers and horsemen looking to dive on that wood line. That means that's a problem for Puppy Paw. No wood there to be had, which means producing Zhugni will become an issue because Zhugni does cost 30 wood per pop. Okay, 
He pushes that back with a couple of Zhugnu that's there. Barbara the Kind of the Sun is on fire. As you can see, the Zhugnu can be only produced with the Song Dynasty. So if he gets pushed off the Song Dynasty, that could become an issue. It looks like once the, the Song Dynasty is activated, it stays there. So yeah, still within the Song Dynasty. So we'll be having the faster producing villagers as well as the uh, uh, Zhugnu. He is under quite a bit of pressure here. Does have the village there to garrison in if he needs a protection? Up to 10 villagers can garrison in there. The villagers on the woodline are pretty exposed at this point. The Barbican of the Sun going down means that uh, that forward position has been lost. Spearmen on the field. Hardened Spearmen to counteract the uh, horsemen, but those will be easily peppered down by the arrows from the archers. Moving towards the eastern woodline now. He needs, needs woods quite desperately. Oh, archers going to snap some villagers here. Not enough to one-shot a villager, though. And the uh, spearman does go down relatively easy. But the Zhugnu going to be starting to mass up there. If that does happen, that become a problem. Double archie range for Poppy Paw. Can't really afford it in terms of the gold income. Doesn't have access to gold. Holy smokes, that's actually an issue. Where's the gold? Just relying on the tax collection just for now. Yep, that forward gold is a really bad spot for him. He's pushed off gold completely, so the Zhugnu won't be an option. May need to transition to Arjas instead. That is what he's doing. Go for the archers instead. The horsemen are looking to dive that position. Will lose a couple of villages there, Puppy Paw, but the horsemen have to retreat because under the fire of the TC, and the TC does take care of one, maybe even a second. But that gold position is actually a problem here for Puppy Paw. A couple of outposts would really help here for Eric. We shall see what he decides to do. Maybe even looking to go to the Castle Age. There is the Castle Age for Eric. That is a strong time. That is for sure. Now we'll be able to put some pressure on with some Castle Age units. But he will need to do some damage because the villager count is relatively high for Puppy Paw. 53 to 32. Puppy just needs to survive. If he survives for the next 10 minutes, you can say that he's probably going to win the game. He's going to get some barracks on the field as well to counteract any uh, any sort of uh, heavy Lancer units that might come in. So Zhugnu with Spearman will be a very strong army composition, it has to be said, for Puppy Paw. That will easily be able to hold the lines, I suspect. Especially because Eric is on a ticking timer now. The economy looking strong. He's going to have access to the gold again. If Puppy Paw can wall up this position... If you can wall up this position and secure it for the gold, that would be incredibly key. He has pushed back the uh, Feudal Age army for Eric. Not yet Castle Age army. He's kind of come forward with a couple of rams. As you can see, he's going to actually look to wall this up. If Puppy Paul can get up the walls, that could be a big, big move to win the game. There is a lot of army, though, on the field there with the rams. A couple of man at arms starting to build up, though, for Eric now. He must have gone up with the Burger of Palace, I suspect. Yeah, there is the Burger of Palace. Acts as five barracks, essentially. Uh, but yeah, if, if Bobby Paul can hold this line, that would be incredibly strong. Looks like he's going to wall up this area. This is actually big, big walling here because this is secured, the southeast corner of the map. There's a little bit of a gap there. I don't think he sees that. That could become an issue, but if... Uh, oof, that's actually a gap there. And Eric probably won't notice it because, I mean, when you're putting so much pressure on the front lines, you tend not to notice those things. And the Manorals will be taking out the front line, but the spin there and enough to deal with it because that will be enabling the Zhugnu to shoot from behind. Usually archers will only tickle the man at arms. That is the case with the Zhugnu as well, but they are a little bit better at coping with this. And the Zhugnu are going to be holding this back, especially with the outpost that's there. Surprisingly, he didn't wall up that small position. The Rams are good to open up this part of the wall as well. It does get the wall down, so that opens another uh, approach for an attack for Eric with the man at arms. That could be a strong play. Papa Ford kind of needs to get up to the next stage. But he will be needing to stay in the feudal age for a little bit longer. He needs the army presence, to be honest. He needs to hang on. It looks like it's the mining stone. If he can get a keep up, that will be a huge amount of uh, time that he'll buy himself. But Lancers and Manorals will be diving here. But this game, Age of Empires 4, does often seem like a macro game heavily. And so uh, as long as Puppy Paul can survive and push this back, he will be still having a huge economy to deal with uh, when he gets to the next stage. A lot of the uh, economy is being idle now. Don't forget a sacred site as well will be captured by Eric. There's a lot of map control that can be gathered here for the Prelates and the Holy Roman Empire. Let's look at the military count because there will be more military on the field you suspect for Puppy Paw. Actually, it's, Eric actually has more. And not only are these are castle age units, but a lot of them are dying there to the town center fire and the, uh, the Zhuk Nu and the outpost. They're not doing heavy amounts of damage each unit, but just the number of them. Three man at arms looking to dive and take the villagers out, but Papa Paul won't mind that too much. With two town centre Song of Dynasty, he'll know that he's ahead. 75 villagers to 40. So you just feel like in this scenario, villager raiding is not the solution. That's not the win condition for Eric, because Papa Paul can just replace them incredibly fast. Instead, really, if you're Eric, I feel like you need the map control. Maybe a forward keep would really help 
because a keep here would be fantastic. It would deny the secondary gold. This gold already is, is kind of exposed and risky as it is, but if you run out of this gold, Papa Paul will struggle. There is a steady amount of stone accumulating for Papi Paul to get that keep. He's got 300. That's only enough for another town center. He's going to go for a greedy third town center. That'd be insane if he does. Ooh, the villagers went high on the right. That's a bit cheeky there for Papi Paul. But uh, Eric notices that. He's going to fight this off with the villagers. There is an outpost there for Papi Paul to retreat to if he needs to. Massive fight going here on the gold mine. There's a couple of uh, man at arms. But they're going to be taken down by the Zhugnu. A large number of Zhugnu now. And uh, they're going to be doing damage to the villagers, denying the gold. But again, the villagers is not an issue because 75 for Poppy Ball, 40 for Eric. We might see that starting to whittle down the numbers there. That could become an, if, an issue. You just feel like with the number of Zhugnu here, it's going to be able to hold off quite nicely. Especially with the spearmen there acting as a bit of a meat shield. Okay, villagers do retreat to the outpost. There is one man at arm looking to siege that down. Might not be enough. A couple more coming into support. An outpost going on the woodland. That would be a strong position to defend as well. Papa Paul still in the feudal age, but the problem with the map like Altai, it's really hard to push particularly quickly. Relic is being brought back by Eric. You just feel like you should probably just capture that Sacred Star on the way because, uh, you know, Papa Paul is kind of stuck in his base at the moment. Doesn't want to risk it. He wants to get that Relic back home. Can't blame him for it. Oh, he does send that. He does send that. Um... That monk with the, the prelate with the relic there to gather the uh, take a sight in the end. All right, Puppy Paul still in the feudal age, really ex extending his feudal age timing there. 83 villagers there to 44. The Holy Roman Empire not able to really maximize the castle age attack. You may want to think about stonewalling because could he go for a sacred site victory? I mean, it will be on a time, it will be setting the timer. There is a sacred site active. Uh, the timer has been kickstarted over at 16 minutes. 16 minutes, 40 seconds approximately. So uh, Papa Paul will need to decap one of those sacred sites, but a large number of Zhugnu here can just continuously kite the man at arms. Feudal Age units versus Castle Age units still work pretty nicely here with Papi Paul. Just the sheer numbers really working in his favor. The man at arms diving again. These will go down relatively quickly. And you have to say, the longer this game goes on, Papa Paul will be looking strong. But one thing has to be considered for the Holy Roman Empire. They get to the Imperial Age and get that the uh, Palace of Swabia. Getting the village account will be very, very nice for the Holy Roman Empire. Building up the economy again for the late game. But it just depends because this time now, it's been a significant period of time that the Chinese have had their higher village account. And the crazy economy for Puppy Paw right now will really be holding him in good strength. And you can see the eco upgrades coming in as well. Wheelbarrow, horticulture, forestry, double broadaxe, specialized pick. You name it, he's getting it. Holy smokes, that age up will be coming relatively soon for Puppy Paw, and that castle age is going to be hugely strong because of the unit that will unlock, but also the economy that will have to fund it all. It's going to go up with the astronomical clock tower. No surprises there. One thing has to be considered that whilst the Puppy Paw does have the villi uh, villager count advantage, 95 to 49, that's a huge amount there. Sacred sites for uh, Eric is going to be helpful. Plus, don't forget the relics. Let's just see how many he has. He has three of them in the monastery so far. The three relics and three sacred sites that will certainly bridge the gap somewhat. But you just feel not enough. And there is that new age. There is the castle age in for Puppy Paw. He's going to be able to fund a lot of units with this uh, economy that he's got. 2,000 gold though in the bank for Eric. That is huge. Not enough food though, has to be said. Mad Arms looking to sweep round on the right side. We will be met with fierce resistance from the Zhugnu. And Eric looking to just push things now. He knows that his opponent is in Castle Age. He doesn't want to wait for too long for the Castle Age units to start coming out for the Chinese. But these Mad Arms won't be enough to deal with the Zhugnu. The Zhugnu, fantastic unit. They are firing bolts with ferocious damage potential against enemy units. They have a high rate of fire, as you can hear. But they are ineffective against armored targets. Well, quote unquote, ineffective. It just depends how many of them you have. With these sheer numbers, even ineffective units will win fights. And you just feel like Eric hasn't been able to muster a huge force to push one step with. With it's just yeah, not really hugely cost effective here. Oh, villagers for Puppy Paw might get slaughtered out here. The deer loses its life, but no particular good reason. Uh, 
All right, this is where you feel like the tide may be turning a little bit. Puppy Paw, in the Castle Age, will be building up a massive army to push the army from Eric back. But one thing has to be considered. Eric does have a lot of gold in the bank. You feel like maybe a bit of balancing could be happening here with the market. And if it did, then maybe Eric could get up to the Imperial Age for the even increased tech advantage. But instead, he's losing a lot of army here to the front line. And these Zhug knew that are going to be acting very nicely in defense. As you can see, it takes a lot of shot just to one shot one man at arms. But you just feel like he's trickling them in. And that keep is now going up for Puppy Ball. That's going to offer so much protection. It's unreal how much protection that's going to offer. Defensive keep going on. That's going to be a staging ground for Puppy Ball just to keep booming up. As you can see, he's got granaries. He's getting farming economy up and running. And he's going to be bolstering that economy and then be able to push up from there. That keep in a nice spot there. It's going to be hard for Eric to push this. He's going to need siege now. There is that siege workshop going down immediately, so Eric does react instantaneously almost to seeing the keep. Three sacred sites have been captured. Our people are going to look to actually maybe decap the north one. There's no walls on the sacred site, so they're relatively exposed. This could have been a relatively easy wall to make, but fortunately with a lot of things going on, uh, no walls have gone up, and it means that Puppy Paw should be able to decap these sites relatively quickly. In fact, he's going straight for the middle one, and he's got a decent number of units here to be able to do that. There are a couple of men looking to get here on the east side of the map. Not much of economy, but this economy would be fairly exposed. That could become a problem if these men arms get in. Not a lot here to defend this position. Puppy Paw will need to be careful of that. And the keep offers so much protection here off the forward gold and the stone. As you discussed earlier, when this stone, this gold runs out, which it will very soon, naturally, Puppy Paul will go for this gold here, and that will uh, fund his economy even further. You just get the feeling now that Imperial Age is kind of mandatory here for Eric to have that attack up, but Puppy Paul, keeping his units behind, he knows that he's under pressure here on the right side. The man of will start to rush into the economy. The, man, the, man, the uh, crossbow is not quite in the right position. But this is fantastic play by Puppy Paul because he's got exactly what he needs. He's got crossbow on the field, which is a direct counter to the Mad Arms, not to mention the Nest of Bees there. So this uh, little raiding it won't be short-lived, and really, if you're Puppy Paul, you're not too worried about that because the number of villagers you know by now are going to be huge. 114 for Puppy Paul, 60 for Eric. You just get the feeling that Eric is trying to push this too much. He's trying to rush the game a bit too much. Maybe needing to go to the Imperial Age a little bit earlier so he can get the Palace of Swabia because he... Yeah, he's gonna be in the he's gonna be in it for the long game, that's for sure. Puppy Paw making sure of that. Making sure that it goes onto the late game. And a second keep that does look to be put up. I'm not sure if he's gonna get it up. He does cancel it. Had a lot of villagers building it, and even with the speed of the Chinese villagers, he's not gonna be able to get that second keep up. Gonna place it a bit more defensively, perhaps, on the right side of this central location. In fact, he's not giving up. He's gonna go for the central sacred site. There's a lot of villagers there, 23 of them. I don't think that could be denied unless there's mangonels on the field. But the Chinese villagers built so fast, and Eric's not he's not he's not reacting. This is an issue. He's really not reacting. He had a chance, a window of opportunity to deny this keep, but he's not gonna get the chance now. He's gonna try and take it down the trebuchet, but the keep goes up. The villagers built that so fast, and by the time he notices, the keep goes up. Uh, that was a missed opportunity there, and it secures that second goal position. That's the key issue. As you can see, awareness of the map here being key, getting that security of that second gold with a heck of a lot of villagers, 35 on them, being supervised by the Imperial official. That gold income is going to be huge for Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw spending a lot of resources. Eric not being able to uh, spend his gold, I'm afraid. Now, there are three trebuchets on the field, which will do great work for Eric to push down that keep. But there are quite a few army here, quite a few numbers of army here for Puppy Paw. 200 population cap for Puppy Paw, 100 for Eric. Literally double the population. Puppy Paw can just start to push now because any resources he banks up now is just going to be waiting in the queue for military. So he can push forward with his army. If he loses army, it's not a big deal. He'll be able to replace it as long as he has production buildings to do so. And uh, now he can take cost effective fights. And even if he takes bad trades, it doesn't matter. He will replenish his army. Eric doesn't have such a luxury. The Mangonels. Sorry, the, uh, the nest of bees for the Chinese doing great work here with the crossbows in front. A lot of crossbows there on the field, so heavy units there that Man at Arms directly countered. A couple of Landsknechte in there, but not enough to be meaningful. Ooh, the crossbow is going to absolutely kill these Man at Arms. You can only feel this is getting bad for Eric. I don't think he's going to push this back. I think he knows he's behind. He's not going to be able to push this back, guys. He's in a rough spot. And Papipur secure that position. He might lose the keep, actually not really, because the villagers are repairing that. 
The crossbowmen are going to push forward, looking to take out the siege. If the siege goes down, that is the last hurrah for Eric. Looking to be in a tough spot here. This might be the GG. A lot of crossbowmen in there for Puppy Paw. The army numbers are nuts. The siege in behind as well with the nest of bees and Springles doing great work. Springles going to do work against the trebuchets. Not being able to repair. The trebuchets will be going down relatively quickly. There is a Mangonel there on the field for the Holy Roman Empire. They'll do good work, but you just fear it's not going to be enough at this stage. Nest of bees in the back line doing some good work. And oh, the Mangonels do do work, but yeah, that's it. That's it over. That's over for Eric. Puppy Paw secures his position. And the semi-finals for the pool number one for this Road to Red Bull Wallalo Legacy June Finals. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this casted series. And if you did, do give the video a thumbs up. We're going to be moving swiftly on to the second matchup. And if you're interested in seeing that, do click the end card that you'll see on your screen now. That will take you to game number two in this tournament. I hope you guys are having a great day. See you guys on the next video.